Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering AWS reInvent 2017. Presented by AWS, Intel, and our ecosystem of partners. Hello everyone, welcome back. Live here is theCUBE's exclusive coverage here in Las Vegas, 45,000 people attending Amazon Web Services, AWS reInvent 2017. I'm John Furrier with Lisa Martin. Our next guest is Miles Kingston. He's the general manager of the Smart Home Group at Intel Corporation. Miles, great, great to have you. Thank you so much for having me here. Really happy to be here. Welcome to theCUBE Alumni Club. First time on, you get all the benefits you get as being an alumni <laughs> is to come back again. Oh, can't wait. <laughs> I'll be here next year for sure. Um, certainly you're running a new business for Intel. Right. I'd like to get some details on that. Because Smart Home, we were at the Samsung Developer Conference, we saw Smart Fridge, Smart Living Room. So you're starting to see this become a reality. I mean, for the CES, I've been every 10 years, it's the Smart Living Room. Yeah. So finally, with cloud and all the computing power, it's arrived, or has it? I believe we're almost there. I think the technology has finally advanced enough and there is so much data available now that you have this combination of this technology that can analyze all of this data and truly start doing some of the artificial intelligence that will help you make your home smarter. And we've certainly seen the growth of Siri with Apple, Alexa for the home with Amazon just really go crazy. In fact, during the industry day uh, yesterday, you saw that the repeat session most attended by developers was Alexa. Yeah. So Alexa's got the minds and has captured the imagination of the developers. Where does it go from here and what's the difference between a smart home and a connected home. And this, uh, can you just kind of take a minute to explain and set the table on that? Yeah, and, and I agree. You know, the, the voice capability in the home, it's absolutely foundational. I think I saw a recent statistic that by 2022, 55% uh, of U.S. households are expected to have a smart speaker type device in the home. So that's a massive percentage. So I think, you know, if you look in the industry, connected home and smart home, they're often used synonymously. We personally look at it as an evolution. And so what I mean by that is today, we think the home is extremely connected. If I talk about my house, and I'm a total geek about this stuff, you know, I've got 60 devices connected to an access point. I've got another 60 devices connected to an IOT hub. Yep. My home does not feel very smart. It's crazy connected. I can turn lights on and off, sprinklers on and off. It's not yet smart. What we're really focused on at Intel is accelerating that transition for your home to truly become a smart home and not just a connected and home. And software's key part of it, and they're seeing developers uh, attack this area very nicely. At the same time, the surface area with these smart homes for security issues, hackers, because Wi-Fi is, you can run a process on them. These are computers. Right. So how does security fit into all this? Yeah, security is huge, and so we're, at Intel we're focused on four technology pillars which we'll, we'll get through during this discussion. One of the first ones is connectivity, and um, we actually have technology that goes into a Wi-Fi access points, the actual silicon. It's optimized for many clients to be in the home, and also we've partnered with com companies like McAfee on a security software that will sit on top of that, that will actually manage all of the connected devices uh, in your home as that extra layer of security. So we fun you know, fundamentally agree that the security is paramount. One of the things that I saw on the website that says, Intel is taking a radically different approach based on proactive research into ways to increase smart home adoption. What makes Intel's approach radically different? Yeah, so I'm glad you asked that. We spent years going into thousands of consumers' homes in kind of North America, Western Europe, China, et cetera, to truly understand some of the pain points they were experiencing. You know, from that, we basically gave all this information to our architects, and we um, really synthesized it into what areas we need to advance technology to enable some of these richer use cases. So we're really working on those foundational building blocks. And so those four ones I mentioned earlier, connectivity, that one is paramount. You know, if you want to add 35 to 100 devices in your home, you better make sure they're all connected all the time and that you've got good bandwidth between them. The second technology was voice. And it's not just voice in one place in your home, it's voice throughout your home. You don't want to have to run to the kitchen to turn your bedroom lights on. 
Uh, and then vision, you know, making sure your home has the ability to see more. Could be cameras, could be motion sensors, could be vision sensors. And then the last one is this local intelligence, this artificial intelligence. So the unique approach that Intel is taking is across all of our assets in the data center, uh, in our artificial intelligence organization, in our new technology organization, our IOT organization, our client computing group. We're taking all of these assets and investing in those four pillars and kind of really delivering unique solutions. And there's actually a couple of them that have been on display this week so far. What about deep lens? That's certainly a, oh, an awesome yes. keynote point. Yeah. And the device that Andy introduced is essentially a wireless device that's basically got machine learning and AI in it. Yes. And that is awesome, because it's also an IoT device, it's got so much versatility to it. Yeah. What's behind that? Can you give some color to deep lens? What does it mean sure. for people? So really excited about that one. We partnered with Amazon and AWS on that for, for quite some time. So um, just a reminder to everybody, that is the you know, first uh, deep learning enabled wireless camera. Um, and what we've helped do in that is it's got an Intel Atom processor inside that actually runs the vision processing workload. We also um, contributed a deep learning toolkit, kind of a software middleware layer. Um, and we've also got the Intel Compute Library for deep neural networks. So basically a lot of pre-configured yeah. algorithms that developers can use. The bigger thing though is when I talked about those four uh, technology pillars, the vision pillar as well as the artificial, artificial intelligence pillar, this is a proof point of exactly that. You know, running an instance of the AWS uh, service on a local device in the home to do this uh, computer vision. When will that device be available? Um, and what's the, the price point? Can we get our hands on one? And how are people going to be getting this? Yeah, so what was uh, announced during the keynote today is that there are actually some deep learning workshops today um, here at uh, reInvent where they're actually being given away. And then it's actually as soon as the announcement was made during the keynote today, they're actually available for pre-order on Amazon.com right now. I'm not actually sure on the shipping date on Amazon, but anybody right. can go Jeff check. Frick, go get one of those quickly. Yes. Order it, put my credit card Please down. Do. Well, that's super exciting, and now where's the impact in that? Because it seems like it could be a great IoT device. Right. It seems like it could be a fun consumer device. Right. Where do you guys see the use cases for these developing? So the, the, the reason I'm excited about this one is I fundamentally believe that vision is going to enable some richer use cases. The only way we're going to get those, though, is if you get these brilliant developers getting their hands on the hardware, with somebody like Amazon, who's made all of the machine learning in the cloud and all yeah. of the pieces easier, it's now going to make it very easy for thousands, ideally hundreds of thousands of developers to start working on this so they can enable these new use cases. The pace of innovation that AWS has set is, uh, it's palpable here, we, we hear it, we feel it. This is a relatively new um, business unit for Intel. You announced this, what, about a year ago at, yes. at reInvent 2016? Correct. Are you, are you trying to match the accelerated pace of innovation that, that an AWS has? And, and what do you see going on in the next 12 months? Where do you think right. we'll be 12 months from now? Yeah, so I think you know, we're definitely trying to be a fantastic technology partner for Amazon. One of the things we have done since last reInvent is we announced we were going to do some reference designs and developer kits to help get Alexa everywhere. Uh, so during this trade show, actually, we are holding, I can't remember the exact number, but many workshops where we are provi uh, providing the participants with a speech enabling uh, tool, uh, developer toolkit. And basically what this is, um, is it's got uh, an Intel platform with Intel's dual DSP on it, a mic array, and it's paired with a uh, Raspberry Pi. And so basically this will allow anybody who already makes a product, it'll allow them to easily integrate Alexa into that product with Intel inside, which is perfect for us. So obviously it's super exciting. We love the cloud. I'm kind of a fanboy of the cloud because I, you know, being a developer in my old days, but the resources that you get out of the cloud are amazing. But now when you start looking at these devices like Deep Lens, yes. the, the possibilities are limitless. Correct. So it's really interesting. So the question I have for you is, you know, we had Tom Siebel on earlier, um, pioneer, invented the CRM category. He's now the CEO of C3 IoT. And I asked him, why are you doing the startup? You're, you're a billionaire, you're rich. You don't need no. to do it. He goes, because I'm a computer guy, I love doing this. He's an entrepreneur at heart. He's right. entrepreneur. But he said something interesting. He said that the two waves that he's surfing, because I call him like a you know, big time surfer, he's a hanging tent on the, on the waves, is IOT and AI. This is an opportunity for you guys to reimagine the smart home. How important is the IOT trend and the AI trend for really doing it right with smart home and, and, and the connected home, whatever we're calling it, there's an opportunity there. How are you guys viewing that vision? Um, 
what progress points do you have identified yeah. at Intel to kind of check? Well, yeah, completely agree. I think for me, AI really is the key turning point here. Because even just talking about connected versus smart, I mean, the thing that makes it smart is the ability to learn and think for itself. Um, and the reason we have focused on those technology pillars is we believe that by adding voice everywhere in the home and the listening capability, as well as adding the vision capability, you're going to enable all of this rich new data which you have to have some of these AI tools to make any sense of. And when you get to video, you absolutely have to have some yeah. amount of it locally so that either for bandwidth reasons, for latency reasons, for privacy reasons, like some of the examples that were given in the keynote today, you just want to keep that stuff locally. Yeah. And having policy and running on it. I mean, you know, access points are interesting. They gives you connectivity, but these are computers, so if someone gets malware on the home, they could run a full threaded process on these machines. Yeah, So absolutely. sometimes you might not want that, sometimes you, you want to be able to control that. Yes, yeah, absolutely. We, we, we would really believe that the wireless access point in the home is one of the greatest areas where you can add additional security in the home and protect all of the devices. So you mentioned, like I think, 120 different devices in your home that are connected. Yeah. How far away do you think your home is from being, from going from connected to smart? Right. What, what's that timeline like? You know what, I think honestly, I think a lot of the hardware is already there. Um, and the examples I'll, I will give is, and I'm not just saying this because I'm here, but I actually do have 15 Echoes in my house because I do want to be able to control all of the infrastructure everywhere in the home. I do believe that in the future, those devices will be listening for anomalies, like glass breaking, a dog barking, a baby crying, and I believe the hardware that we have today is very capable of doing that. Similarly, I think a lot of the cameras today are trained to whenever they see motion to do certain things and to start recording. Yeah. I think that use case is going to evolve over time as well. So I, I truly believe that we are probably two years away from really seeing, with some of the existing infrastructure, truly being able to enable some smarter home use cases. There's a renaissance going on, the creativity is going to be amazing. I'm looking at a tweet that Bert Lattimore from our team uh, made. There's, on our last interview with the Washington County Sheriff, yeah. customer of Amazon, pays $6 a month for the, getting all the mug shots. He goes, I'm going to use deep lens for things like recognizing scars and tattoos. Because now they have to take pictures when someone comes in, that's a criminal. But now with Deep Lens, they can program it to look for tattoos. Yeah, absolutely. And if you see things like the Ring doorbell today, they have that neighborhood um, application of it, so you can actually kind of share within your local neighborhood. If somebody had a package stolen, they can post a picture of that person. And even just security cameras. My house, it feels like Fort Knox sometimes. I've got so many security cameras. Yeah. It used to be every time there was a windstorm, I got 25 alerts on my phone because a branch was blowing. Uh, now everyone. I have security cameras that actually can do facial recognition and say, your son is home, your daughter is home, your wife is home. So uh, all, all the house is going to have a little sign that says, protected by Alexa and Intel and yes. Deep Lens. Yeah, don't you dare, <laughs> exactly. Don't even walk in there. <laughs> no sneaking out for the kids. Yes, exactly, <laughs> yeah. All right, so real quick to end the segment, quickly summarize and share what is the Intel relationship with Amazon Web Services? Talk about the partnership. It's a great relationship. We've been partnering with Amazon for over a decade, starting with AWS. Over the last couple of years, we've started working closely with them on their first party products. So many of you have seen the Echo Show and the Echo Look. That has Intel inside. It also has a real sense camera in the look. We've now enabled the speech enabling developer kit, which is meant to help get Alexa everywhere running on Intel. Yeah. We've now done Deep Lens, which is a great example of local artificial intelligence, yeah. partnered with all the work we've done with them in the cloud. So it really is, I mean, I would say the partnership expands all the way from the very edge device in the home, all the way to the cloud. Miles, thanks for coming. Miles Kingston with Intel, general manager of Smart Home Group, new business unit at Intel, really reimagining the future for people's lives. And again, this great case where technology can actually help people rather than making it more complicated, uh, which we all know if we have access points and kids gaming, <laughs> it can be a problem. This is theCUBE, live here in Las Vegas. 45,000 people here at Amazon reInvent. Five years ago, our first show, only 7,000. Now, what amazing growth. Thanks so much for coming on. Lisa Martin and John Furrier here, reporting from theCUBE. More coverage after this short break. <laughs>